All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're talking about how to make this lovely picture of a cow with a mohawk, asking you if you like her mohawk. And what we're going to be learning today is how to do a quick selection on somebody's hair, like this cow's got right here, working with the perspective tool and briefly talking about how to crop this image and also how to go about sourcing some good ideas for like how to pick photos and all that. And now that I look at this picture of this cow that I used as a sample, this giant spot on the side of its body is a shot of Australia. So there you have it. So anyway, we're going to start off by looking for a lovely picture of a cow. And when you're looking for a picture of a cow, do I have a window open for this? I do. When you're looking for a picture of a cow, you're looking for something that you can work with. Straight on images of a mohawk probably aren't what you're going to want because a mohawk is like a holding up a big thick stack of papers. The front on view is kind of hard to see and doesn't really provide a good idea that that's a mohawk instead of just a cowlick. So we kind of want something where the cow is like this. They're kind of looking to the side. You kind of get like a side view you could work with. We also need some vertical space in order to pick something that we can actually stick the mohawk in. Again, this is not terrible. The cow's kind of off to the side, looking at the camera, but not dead on. But we need some vertical space, which is why I decided to pick this cow here. Uh, this appears to be a picture used in UC Davis for their website, but I just grabbed this because it's just for practice. This is copy and paste that into here. This will be our canvas for right now. And then we're going to need a picture of somebody with a very lovely mohawk. So if we type in mohawk, I immediately just found the first picture was this guy who's got a very lovely red mohawk. That's of a profile that's easy to work with. So I've grabbed that and put that over here in another document. And what we really want to do right now is we want to select this particular mohawk and we want to grab it so that we can just dump it on top of this cow. So in order to do that, there's a few different ways you can grab something that's a very distinctive color like this. One way is we can go to select color range. And we can select like a nice good red by just clicking and dragging it. So we're just getting Mohawk. Then I don't really want his head. So we'll do that. And let's see what this gives us. So I'll hit Control C, Control V. And that's not really enough of his Mohawk, unfortunately. So let's undo. Whoops. Let's undo that. Let's try that again. Select color range. And then let's just bump it up all the way. Eh, same problem. We need more of his mohawk. So let's try plan B. Let's use the lasso tool. It's over here in your tool section under L. It literally looks like a cowboy's lasso. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to select and just drag this around a rough outline of this gentleman's hair. If you don't get it perfect, that's not really what our goal is here today. We're just getting you used to some of the tools. This is definitely going to be rough and tumble. Then we're going to get control C, control V to make a copy of that on its own layer. And now we're going to look at refining this selection. So there's a bunch of tools that are going to allow us to do this. But first, I'm going to hit control and then click on the window here in the layers panel that the image preview sits in to reselect it. And we're going to with the lasso tool or maybe the marquee tool up here selected we're going to select and mask this image and then we're going to start drawing the outline of this gentleman's hair so that we can try and teach the program what we don't want to have included in it and really what i'm looking to do is just have photoshop define a hard edge for this hair because it's like oh wait a minute i think you want this red stuff and you're going to erase this almost kind of green stuff in the background so we're just going to take the refine selection tool over here refine edge brush and we're going to paint around what we don't want anymore and we're going to pay attention here to what the brush is doing as we work to make sure 
that it is in fact selecting the right colored stuff and it's not trying to select and erase large swaths of the red. We're going to be patient with this because this can be time consuming depending on how beefy the picture is size wise and how beefy your computer is processing wise. Even my computer, when asked to do this and render a video that's being live recorded by another piece of software at the same time, makes it throw a smidgen of a hissy fit. So we're just going to erase inside the hair follicles. And if we don't get it perfect, you know, there's other things we can do. I'm not too worried about it for this tutorial. So we're just going to click OK. We're going to... Select the selection tool over here by hitting V. So you can just click on the move tool and we're going to copy it and paste it again to its own layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit this little button down here that looks like a camera called add layer mask. Hit the B button to bring up the brush and we're just going to clean up some of this gray looking nonsense at the edges here. But most of that is still going to be there. So don't sweat the small stuff. This is just for a quick jinky image so we don't really need this to be perfect so now that I've kind of erased a little bit of that on the edge down here I'm just going to take this whole layer copy it I'm gonna paste it in here in Cowtown oh wait I need to go ahead and uh, let's just make another layer and we'll select both of these and we'll merge them so that it kind of saves what's going on on that layer to erase stuff and then we'll select all by hitting control a Copying it, control C, and pasting it with control V in Cowtown. So here we've got our image. There's a little smidge here that I'll erase with E, just to be sure that that's gone. And now we're ready to start manipulating this particular hair into being something else, being a cow's muhawk. So to do that, I'm going to hit control T for free transform. And I'm just going to shrink this down here a little bit so it's a little easier for me to see and work with. So one of the things we've got going on here is this is an okay mohawk. I mean, it could probably be thicker. I could probably try to capture more of the individual hairs by finding a higher resolution version of that image. But for the moment, what I want to do is I just want to get this a uniform color and I don't want it to be red anymore because I just don't feel like this cow is into red. So I'm going to hit Control u all this layer is selected, and I'm going to bring up the Hue and Saturation window. And I'm going to click Colorize so that we can make this into a solid color. Colorize starts out with a very low saturation, so this looks kind of gray. So I'm going to pull that up really bright. And then I'm going to use the Hue slider up here to select a better color. So let's do like a teal. I like me a nice teal color. And colorizing has the added advantage of if you have any of that gray nonsense left in between the hairs, the colorize hue and saturation will remove a lot of that problem. Next step, we're going to hit control T again and make that a little bit smaller. And I'm going to position it roughly where I want it. So I want this little piece right here to be right here, the center of the cow's head. So to get it right where I want it, that's a pretty good size for right now. Let's go to Edit. Let's go to Transform. Let's go to Perspective. So Perspective is what's nice when you want something to look like it's we're looking around like it's attached to a pivoting head in space. And if we do this, this is actually pretty close to what I'm after. I want it to look like we're getting close to like a, somebody with a mohawk looking directly at me but not too much because we still want people to see like, oh yeah, that's definitely a mohawk. Like that's, that's what that's supposed to be. So that's a pretty decent size, but that's still kind of big. Let's just move it down. And we're going to start playing around with this so that it looks like it's in a good spot. And you might be saying to yourself, Mr. Chupacabra, I, I see a, pl a flaw in your plan. Uh, we seem to be getting to the point where it's overlapping the cow's ear. And I don't know about you, but I've not seen a lot of animals with like hair coming off like this that cover up their ear. And the simple answer is that's actually really easy to deal with. We're going to just put another mask on that with the alpha mask, this little button down here. It looks like a camera. 
And what this is going to do allow us to do is we're going to be able to hide stuff, but it's not actually being erased. So at any time, I could switch from black to white by hitting the X button here in these little foreground and background color pickers, and I could bring it back or erase it. That's called non-destructive editing, and it's the bread and butter that makes Photoshop such a wonderful program. So if this doesn't work, and I zoom in, I'm like, oh, there's like a gap there, I can make this brush a little smaller, hit X, and I can draw around the ear more mohawk so that we can see exactly what we're working with. And now it looks like it's actually a part of the cow, which makes it really, you know, handy and fancy. So now I'm going to go back over here. Previously, we had this little window here that's all white with a little black splotch in it selected because that's our little layer mask. But now I want to work on the actual image itself again. So I'm going to click on the preview of it, which is over here on the left. And I'm going to hit Control T again because I want this just a teensy bit bigger. Whoops. And we'll just nudge it down and over a smidge. And that looks pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Uh, let's make that a darker blue just slightly. And that looks pretty good. But the one thing here that's going to be a problem is we got a lot of empty space, a lot of empty farm going on here. So I'm going to hit C to bring up the crop tool. And what crop means is you're going to snip around the edges to trim away the excess space that we do not need. So that the only thing that people are going to see is going to be the beautiful cow. To work with the crop tool, all you have to do is grab an edge and drag it around. It's kind of like what you see in this little target window is what you're going to get when you're done cropping. And you can also grab in the center of it to drag this size window around so that you can center it better if you have the right size, but you're not entirely certain that you have the right spacing or the right angle on everything. And if you're pretty happy with what's going on, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to chop off everything else and delete it. And this is our lovely cow. The next thing we want to do is add some text, right? So I'm going to hit T, bring up the text tool. It's over here. It's a, it's a giant T, literally. Can't miss it. And I want a nice blocky font that really brings across my message. Now, when we're talking about internet memes and jokes, we're talking about the impact font, which comes with every copy of basically every computer ever. And this is a nice blocky font that's really easy to read. And we're going to say, like my Mohawk. We're going to make this all capitals because it's easier for people to see. We're going to hit Control-T to boost the size of that text. The nice thing about text on a computer is that it's what's called vector. Vector graphics are drawn using math, which means no matter how big I make this, how small I make it, and then big again, provided that it's still in its vector form, it'll still look crisp, clean, and wonderful and it won't have any pixelation, blurriness, or difficulty in reading it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add something to really make it pop from the background, because that's a light-colored background, and that's a light-colored text, and I really want people to see it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double-click this layer, bring up the Layer Styles panel. You can do this to any layer in the Layers panel over here. This is full of things like drop shadows, very handy to have where we can literally add a dark line underneath of it that we can drag out like this. We can also increase the size to just make it a nice shadow. We can add a stroke, which just makes it look like there's an outline around the image. We can bevel it and emboss it so it looks like it's a three-dimensional piece of type. We can add an inner glow or an inner shadow, which if I play with this a little bit, it'll look like there's actually like some dimension, like it's a cutout and you're seeing through the image into the hole. But what I would like to do is I'm going to put a small stroke on this. Let's make it like two pixels. I'm going to put a drop shadow on that's very sharp. I don't want, I want to put the size down to zero and I'm going to drag it down here. So it looks like there's a hard light positioning a shadow that just goes boom and it looks like it pops out at you a little bit because the shadow is in the background. So it makes it look like the, the type is floating above this like it's a canvas. And it's dropping a shadow behind it that's so sharp that you're like, wow, somebody's literally holding a sign hovering above this image. And I click OK. And with that, we're done. That's our Do You Like My Mohawk picture. I hope you found this useful. If you guys have any questions or comments going forward on this tutorial, let me know. And uh, 
I'm going to be working on the next Photoshop tutorial after this. So I hope you've enjoyed making a lovely photo about a cow with a mohawk to share with your friends with a fun pun. And until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.